Hello everyone, today, we'll dive into building a sleek signup form using React.js. This form will allow users to register by entering their name, email address, and password. For those with an existing account, there's a convenient option to sign in. However, if they're new, they'll complete the sign-up process by clicking the button after providing their details. In this step-by-step -step tutorial, I'll guide you through the process of creating this functional and user-friendly form from scratch. As always, you'll find the project assets linked in the description, these include some simple icons we use throughout the project. To get started, create a project folder and name it anything you like. Open this folder in Visual Studio Code, and then launch the integrated terminal. Let me quickly enlarge the terminal so you can clearly follow along with what's happening. We'll use npx to create a React app called SignUp. This process involves setting up the React framework, installing React and React DOM, and managing dependencies through npm. It might take a few minutes, so be patient as everything is installed. To save time, I'll skip ahead in the video to the completion of this setup. Once the setup is successful, we'll navigate into the signup folder, and launch the project on a development server to start building our application. To start with a clean slate, we need to remove all default content. Navigate to the SRC folder, and open the app.js file. Here, delete the entire header section, and remove any associated class name properties. This will give us a blank canvas to work on. Next, let's update the project title. Head over to the public folder, and open the index.html file. Scroll down to locate the title tag, and update its content. I'll name it sign up form to match the focus of our project. Once that's done, save your changes, and we're ready to move forward. Now, let's set up the folder structure for this project. Inside the SRC folder, create a new folder named components. Within the components folder, Add another folder called Assets, which will hold all the icons we'll use throughout the project. Next, within the Components folder, create another folder named SignUp. Inside the SignUp folder, add a new file called SignUp.jsx, which will house our main component. We'll expand this file into a basic React functional component, using the arrow function syntax. Just so you know, our AFC is not built into React. It's a shortcut provided by extensions like ES7 plus React Redux React native snippets. This extension simplifies creating components by automatically expanding abbreviations. Finally, in the signup folder, create another file called signup.css. This file will be used to style our signup component. Once you've created these files, your folder structure should look something like this. Let's start by importing the CSS file into the signup.jsx file. Using the import statement, we'll instruct our React application to include the signup.css file in the current module, allowing the CSS styles to be applied to the signup component. Next, we'll render the signup component in app.js. Inside the two div elements in app.js, replace the default content with our signup component like this. Additionally, since we don't need the default logo in the app, remove the line that imports it. This will help keep the code clean and focused on our new component. Next, we'll add icons to the Assets folder. I'll transfer them from my desktop. Navigate to the project directory, and locate the SRC folder. 
open the components folder, and locate the assets folder. Once there, I'll paste the icons into the assets folder. Switching back to our code, you'll notice we now have three images inside the folder. Let's proceed to import these images into the signup.jsx file. Using the import statement, we'll first assign a variable to the first image, which is the user icon, and then specify its path. Repeat the same steps for the other two icons as shown. Next, in this component, we'll define a div container that will serve as the main wrapper for our form. Within this container, we will add a div with class header. And inside it, we'll include another div with the class name text, to display the title sign up. Before proceeding further, let's add some general styles to the index.css file. First, navigate to Google Fonts, and search for the DM Sans font. Once found, select it, go to the embed section, and copy the import code snippet. Back in the index.css file, paste the import statement at the very top to ensure the font is prioritized. Next, we'll apply the font to our project by including it as the first option in the body styles. We'll also set the body to occupy the full viewport height with 100 VH. Apply a dark background color for a modern look, and, because of the dark background, adjust the text color to white for better contrast and readability, for now. Let's move on. Below the header div, we'll add another div with the class name inputs. Inside this div, we'll include another div with the class name input. This input div will hold our first icon image. For this, we'll use the variable that contains the path to the user image. Right below the icon, we'll add an input field with a placeholder set to username. Next, we need to add two more input fields. To do this, duplicate the existing input div twice. For the second input field, we'll use the email icon as the icon, and set the placeholder text to email address. In the third input field, we'll use the password icon, and set the placeholder to password. This setup will give us three input fields, each with its respective icon and placeholder. Moving on, below the inputs div, we'll add another div with the class name forgot password. This section will prompt visitors by asking if they already have an account. Within this forgot password div, we'll include a span that will serve as a clickable link, directing users to sign into their existing account. Lastly, we'll create another div with the class name submit container. Inside this container, add a div with the class name submit, which will display the text sign up. Perfect. We now have the basic, unstyled structure of our sign up form. Let's move on to adding some styling to bring it to life. Let's start with the container class. This class will define the overall layout and structure of the form. We'll begin by setting the display property to flex, which makes the container a flex box, allowing for better control over the layout. We'll arrange the items vertically by setting flex direction to column. Next, we'll center the form horizontally by setting margin to auto. To give the form a clean, white background, we'll use background of this color. Since we now have a white background, we don't need the white text color we set earlier. To position the form further down the page, we'll add a margin top of 12.5 rem, creating ample space from the top. We'll also add some vertical padding with padding bottom, 1.8 rem. Finally, to control the form's width and make it more visually appealing, we'll set the width to 600 pixels. 
Next, the header class. We'll set the display to flex to use flexbox for layout control. By applying flex direction, column, we ensure the header elements are stacked vertically. To center the elements horizontally, we'll use align items, center. This will align the title, and any other content, to the middle of the container. We'll add a margin top of 1.8 rem to create some space between the header and the top of the container. Additionally, setting a gap of 0.6 rem will create consistent spacing between any elements within the header. Lastly, by setting the width to 100%, we ensure that the header stretches across the full width of the container, maintaining a balanced and structured layout. Now, let's style the text class to define the appearance of our header title. First, we'll set the color to a rich green shade that will make the title stand out and add a fresh, vibrant look. To enhance readability and impact, we'll set the font size to 3 rem, making the title large and prominent. Lastly, we'll apply a font weight of 750 to ensure the text is bold and impactful, creating a strong visual presence. Next, the Inputs class. First, we'll add a margin top of 3.4 rem to create some space between the header and the input section, ensuring the layout doesn't feel cramped. We'll set the display to flex, which gives us more control over the arrangement of the input fields. By applying flex direction, column, the inputs will be stacked vertically, providing a clean and organized layout. Finally, we'll set a gap of 1.6 rem between each input field. This creates consistent spacing, improving readability and making the form user-friendly. Let's move on to styling the input class, which defines the layout and appearance of each input field container. We'll set display, flex to create a flexible container, allowing us to align the icon and input field side by side. Then, we use align items, center to vertically center both elements within the container for a polished look. To center the input container itself within the form, we'll apply margin, auto. Next, we'll give it a soft, light green background by setting background, to this color. This subtle color enhances the overall visual appeal and maintains consistency with our theme. We'll define the size by setting the width to 30 rem, and the height to 5 rem, providing ample space for user interaction. Finally, to add a subtle border, we'll apply border, 1 pixel solid, using a slightly transparent green to keep it soft and unobtrusive. This setup ensures that each input container is spacious, centered, and visually aligned with the overall design. Now, let's style the input field inside the input selector to define how the text input behaves and looks. We'll start by setting the height to 3 rem, and width to 25 rem, which ensures that the input field is appropriately sized and fits well within the container. To give the input a clean, minimalist look, we'll set the background to transparent, making it blend seamlessly with the container's background. Next, we'll remove any default borders by setting border to none, and to eliminate the outline that appears when the input is focused, we'll set outline to none. For better readability and a user-friendly experience, we'll set the font size to 1.2 rem, providing enough size for the text to be clear. Additionally, we'll adjust the text color to a darker shade, ensuring good contrast and legibility. Let's now style the input image to control the appearance of the icons inside the input fields. We'll start by applying this margin, which adds horizontal space around the image. This ensures that the icon is not too close to the input field, creating a balanced visual space between the icon and the text input. Next, the Forgot Password class, which is used for the text below the input fields, prompting users if they already have an account. We'll start by applying margin top, 
1.7 rem to create some space between this section and the input fields, giving the form a more balanced layout. For the text itself, we'll use a soft gray that remains legible but doesn't draw too much attention away from the other elements. Next, we'll adjust the font size to 1.1 rem for readability, and apply a font weight of 500 to give the text a slightly bold, yet approachable look. To make sure the text aligns correctly, we'll add padding left, 3.8 rem, pushing it away from the left edge of the container and aligning it nicely with the other elements in the form. Next, we'll style the forgot password span to make the sign-in link more interactive. We'll set the color to a shade of green, to make the link stand out and indicate it's clickable. To make it clear that the text is interactive, we'll also apply cursor, pointer, changing the cursor to a hand when users hover over the link, further enhancing the user experience. Let's style the hover effect for the forgot password to enhance the user experience when they interact with the link. We'll apply text decoration, underline, which will underline the text when the user hovers over it. This visual cue helps users recognize that the text is clickable and serves as a clear indicator that it's a link. Let's now move on to the styling of the submit class, which is used for the submit button in the form. We begin by setting the display to flex, which allows us to center the button content both horizontally and vertically. This is done by applying justify content, center, and align items, center, ensuring the text within the button is perfectly aligned. The background color is set to a green shade, to match the theme of the form and highlight the button's importance. To make the text stand out, we set color to white, ensuring it's white for contrast. We give the button a fixed width of 30 rem, and height of 5 rem to make it consistent and easy to interact with. The font size is set to 1.2 rem, and the font weight is increased to 600 to make the text bold and easily readable. To enhance the interactivity of the button, we apply cursor, pointer, changing the cursor to a hand when hovered over, indicating it's clickable. Lastly, we add a smooth transition effect with transition which gradually changes the background color when the user hovers over the button, giving it a more polished and dynamic feel. Now, Let's enhance the button's interactivity with a hover effect by styling the hover class. We apply background color, which changes the button's background to a darker green when the user hovers over it. It appears there's an issue with our code. We need to center the button. Let's go back to our styles and focus on the container. Set justify content to center, and align items to center as well. For the submit button, add a margin of 2 rem to create some breathing room. This should improve the layout. Let's test it by entering sample data, a dummy name, email address, and password. One more thing, the password field should mask the input details. Let's correct that in our JSX file. Ensure the password input field has the type set to password instead of text. Now, when we enter a password, its details will be hidden from view. And that's how you can build a simple sign-up form using React. If you have any questions or need further clarification, feel free to leave a comment below. That's all for today, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.